Welcome to Bone Spears and Starships. We are proud to present The Valhalla in the Void. Chapter 1 The Edge of the Frontier. Captain Eric Johansson stood on the bridge of the UTF Valhalla, staring out into the vast expanse of space. Stars glimmered like scattered diamonds against the velvet blackness, a serene contrast to the turmoil brewing in his mind. The Valhalla, a battleship of the United Terran Federation, had seen countless battles and its worn exterior bore the scars of many encounters. Eric himself was no stranger to conflict. His face, though still strikingly handsome, was etched with lines of experience and fatigue. Captain, we're approaching Outpost Epsilon, reported Lieutenant Sophia Lundgren from her station. Her voice, steady and clear, brought Eric back to the present. He turned to look at her, admiring the way she handled herself with confidence and precision. Sophia was not only one of the best pilots in the fleet, but also a key member of his elite Alpha Squad. Her blonde hair was pulled back in a no-nonsense bun, and her blue eyes were focused on the data streaming in front of her. Thank you, Lieutenant, Eric replied, his voice carrying the weight of command and camaraderie. Prepare for docking procedures. I want a full status report from the outpost commander as soon as we arrive. Sophia nodded her fingers dancing over the console as she relayed the orders. Yes, Captain. Docking procedures initiated. We'll be in position in five minutes. As the Valhalla glided towards the outpost, Eric couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The Xenarch Empire had been quiet for too long, and he knew better than to trust such a silence. The Xenarchs were an aggressive and ruthless alien species, always seeking to expand their territory at the expense of others. Eric had faced them before and knew their cunning and ferocity. Commander Svensson, what do we know about the current situation at Epsilon? Eric asked, turning to his second-in-command. Commander Lars Svensson, a tall and stoic man with a scar running down his left cheek, consulted his data pad. Reports indicate increased Xenarch activity in the surrounding sectors, but nothing concrete. Outpost Epsilon has been on high alert for the past week. They're requesting additional support and supplies. Eric frowned, the lines on his forehead deepening. Let's hope we're not too late. The Valhalla docked with the outpost smoothly, and Eric led a small team, including Sophia and Lars, through the airlock. They were met by the outpost commander, Major Ingrid Rasmussen, whose tired eyes spoke volumes about the recent tensions. Captain Johansson, welcome to Epsilon, she greeted, saluting crisply. We've been expecting you. Major Rasmussen, Eric acknowledged, returning the salute. What's the situation here? Ingrid's expression grew grim. We've been experiencing sporadic attacks from Xenarch raiding parties. They're testing our defenses, probing for weaknesses. We've managed to hold them off so far, but their numbers are increasing, and I'm not sure how much longer we can keep this up without reinforcements. Eric exchanged a glance with Sophia, who looked equally concerned. We'll do whatever we can to strengthen your defenses and support your efforts, he assured Ingrid. Let's start with a full debriefing and assessment of your current status. As they walked towards the command center, Eric couldn't help but feel the weight of responsibility pressing down on him. The UTF relied on leaders like him to protect humanity's far-flung outposts, and failure was not an option. He glanced at Sophia, her determination mirroring his own, and felt a flicker of hope. They would face this threat together, and somehow, they would prevail. Chapter 2 The Calm Before the Storm The command center of Outpost Epsilon was a hive of activity, with officers and technicians moving briskly between workstations, the hum of machinery and chatter blending into a symphony of controlled chaos. Eric Johansson stood at the center, flanked by Lieutenant Sophia Lundgren and Commander Lars Svensson. Major Ingrid Rasmussen pointed to a large holographic display that dominated one wall of the room, showing the surrounding sectors and recent Xenarch activity. As you can see, Ingrid began, tracing a series of red blips with her finger, the Xenarch have been testing our perimeter defenses along these coordinates. They've been using small, agile ships to probe for weaknesses. Our sensor arrays have detected increasing activity, suggesting they're preparing for a larger assault. Eric studied the display, his mind working to form a plan. We need to bolster your defenses and gather more intelligence on their movements. Lieutenant Lundgren, 
coordinate with the outpost's engineering team to upgrade their sensor arrays and fortify the perimeter turrets. On it, Captain, Sophia replied. Already moving towards the engineering station, her focus intense. Lars, Eric continued, turning to his second in command. I want you to lead a recon mission. Take a squad and scout the surrounding sectors. We need to know where the Zenark are massing their forces. Commander Svensson nodded. I'll prepare a team immediately. As his officers dispersed to carry out their tasks, Eric turned back to Major Rasmussen. We'll also need to address the morale of your troops. Prolonged stress from these attacks can be just as damaging as the physical threat. Ingrid sighed, her shoulders sagging slightly. You're right, Captain. My people are exhausted. Any support you can provide would be greatly appreciated. I'll see what we can do, Eric promised. In the meantime, Let's review your current supply status and see where we can make improvements. Hours passed as Eric and Ingrid worked through logistics and defensive strategies. The outpost situation was dire, but not hopeless. With the right support and coordination, they could hold out against the Zenark until reinforcements arrived. Sophia returned, a sheen of sweat on her brow, but a determined look in her eyes. Captain, the upgrades are underway. The engineering team is efficient and quick. We should see improved sensor range and turret efficiency within the next few hours. Excellent work, Sophia, Eric said, appreciating her dedication and skill. Have you had a chance to eat? You've been at it nonstop. Sophia shook her head, a slight smile playing on her lips. Not yet, but I'll grab something soon. There's too much to do right now. Eric nodded, understanding the drive to push through exhaustion. Just make sure you do. We need everyone at their best. Before Sophia could respond, an alarm blared through the command center. Red lights flashed, and a voice crackled over the intercom. Unidentified vessels approaching. All hands to battle stations. Eric's heart pounded as he moved to the tactical console. Looks like we're about to get some answers. Major, activate the outpost defenses. Sophia, get to your fighter. Lars, is your recon team ready? Commander Svensson's voice came over the comm. We're ready, Captain. Deploying now. Eric took a deep breath, focusing on the task at hand. All units, prepare for combat. Let's show the Zenark what the UTF is made of. The command center erupted into action. Eric watched the holographic display as the first wave of Zenark ships closed in, their sleek, ominous forms moving with deadly precision. He could see Sophia's fighter launching from the hangar her skillful maneuvers immediately evident as she took point in the defensive formation. Incoming fire! Someone shouted as the Zenark ships opened fire. The outpost shields flared, absorbing the initial barrage, but Eric knew they couldn't withstand a prolonged assault. Return fire! He commanded, his voice steady. The outpost turrets responded, blazing to life and sending streams of energy towards the enemy vessels. Explosions dotted the void as some of the Zenark ships were hit, but more were on the way. Eric's mind raced. They needed to hold out long enough for the recon team to gather crucial intelligence. He trusted Lars to get the job done, but for now, it was up to him and his team to hold the line. Sophia, how are you holding up out there? Eric asked over the calm. Just fine, Captain, Sophia replied, her voice calm despite the chaos. These Zenark aren't as tough as they look. Eric couldn't help but smile. Sophia's confidence was contagious. Keep it up. We're counting on you. As the battle raged on, Eric felt a surge of determination. They would fight. They would endure. And they would show the Zenark Empire that humanity was not to be underestimated. Chapter 3. Initial Setback The battle for Outpost Epsilon intensified as wave after wave of Zenark ships assaulted their defenses. Eric Johansson's orders rang out with practice precision, each command calculated to maximize their chances of survival. The UTF Valhalla and the outpost combined forces held the line, but it was clear the Xenarchs were not going to relent easily. Captain, shields are at 30% and dropping fast, reported Ensign Keller, his voice strained with urgency. Divert power from non-essential systems to the shields, Eric replied. We need to buy Lars and his team more time. Lieutenant Sophia Lundgren's fighter swooped and darted through the chaos, her piloting skills nothing short of extraordinary. She targeted enemy ships with lethal accuracy, 
each shot contributing to their defense. Despite the dire circumstances, she remained calm and focused, her confidence a beacon of hope for the others. Captain, I'm picking up a large energy signature, Sophia's voice crackled over the calm. It looks like they're bringing in a heavy cruiser. Eric's heart sank. A Xenarch heavy cruiser could spell disaster for their already strained defenses. All units, focus fire on that cruiser. We can't let it reach the outpost. As the battle continued, the recon team's mission took on even greater importance. Commander Lars Svensson led his squad through the dense asteroid field surrounding the sector, their stealthy approach aimed at gathering critical intelligence on the Xenarch fleet's staging area. Lars, status report, Eric called out, his voice tight with concern. We've identified a massive Xenarch carrier just beyond the asteroid belt, Lars responded. They're using it as a forward base to launch their attacks. We're transmitting the coordinates now. Eric glanced at the data streaming onto his console. The carrier was a formidable threat, its destruction essential to turning the tide of the battle. Good work, Lars. Get back here as soon as you can. We have a heavy cruiser incoming. Understood, Captain. We're en route, Lars confirmed, his voice steady. Back at the outpost, the situation was growing more desperate. The Xenarch heavy cruiser emerged from the darkness, its massive silhouette looming menacingly. It unleashed a barrage of plasma fire, hammering the outpost's shields and defenses. Captain, shields are failing. Ensign Keller shouted, panic creeping into his voice. All hands, brace for impact. Eric ordered, gripping the console as the Valhalla shuddered under the assault. Explosions rocked the ship, systems flickering and alarms blaring. Sophia's fighters zipped through the enemy lines, desperately trying to draw fire away from the outpost. Her maneuvers were daring but even she couldn't be everywhere at once. The outpost's defenses began to buckle under the relentless onslaught. Eric, we can't hold out much longer, Major Rasmussen said, her voice grim. We need to evacuate the non-combat personnel. Agreed, Eric replied, his mind racing for solutions. Begin evacuation protocols. Get as many people out as you can. As the evacuation began, Eric knew they were running out of time. The Xenarch cruiser was advancing, and their defenses were crumbling. He had to make a difficult decision. Sophia, we need to take out that cruiser, or we're finished, Eric said, his voice resolute. I'm on it, Captain, Sophia replied, determination in her tone. She broke formation, accelerating towards the massive enemy ship. Cover me. I'm going for the reactor core. Eric watched on the tactical display as Sophia's fighter weaved through enemy fire. Her piloting skills pushed to the limit. She targeted the cruiser's vulnerable points, aiming for a critical hit. Sophia, be careful, Eric murmured, his concern for her safety mingling with his hope for their survival. Sophia's fighter unleashed a barrage of missiles, each one striking the cruiser with pinpoint accuracy. The enemy ship shuddered, secondary explosions rippling along its hull. But before Sophia could complete her attack run, a sudden plasma burst from the cruiser struck her fighter, sending it spiraling out of control. Sophia, Eric shouted, horror gripping his heart. I'm hit, but I'm not out yet, Sophia's voice came through, strained but determined. I'm going to finish this. With a final surge of effort, Sophia's damaged fighter launched its remaining payload, striking the cruiser's reactor core. The massive ship erupted in a blinding explosion taking several nearby Xenarch ships with it. The tactical display cleared, revealing the shattered remains of the heavy cruiser. The immediate threat was neutralized, but the cost was high. Eric's relief was tempered by his concern for Sophia. Status on Lieutenant Lundgren's fighter, Eric demanded. Her signal is weak, but still active, Ensign Keller reported. She's alive, Captain. Get a rescue team out there now, Eric ordered. We need to bring her back. As the rescue team deployed, Eric allowed himself a moment to breathe. They had survived the initial assault, but the battle was far from over. The Xenarch carrier still loomed, and the outpost's defenses were in ruins. They had bought themselves some time, but the real fight was just beginning. Chapter 4. Resilience and Innovation The aftermath of the battle left Outpost Epsilon in a state of frantic recovery. Fires were extinguished, debris cleared 
and the wounded tended to with the limited medical supplies on hand. Captain Eric Johansson moved swiftly through the chaos, coordinating efforts to restore order and prepare for the inevitable next wave of attacks. Captain, we've secured Lieutenant Lundgren, a rescue team member reported as they carried Sophia on a stretcher into the med bay. Despite her injuries, she managed a weak smile when she saw Eric. Good to see you in one piece, Sophia, Eric said, relief evident in his voice. He placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. You did well out there. Rest and recover. We still need you. I'll be back on my feet before you know it, Sophia replied, her determination undiminished despite her injuries. Eric turned to Major Rasmussen, who was organizing the defense repairs. Ingrid, we need to fortify our defenses as quickly as possible. How are we on supplies and personnel? We're stretched thin, but we'll manage, Ingrid responded. The engineering teams are working around the clock to repair the damage. We've also begun upgrading the sensor arrays and turret systems, as Lieutenant Lundgren suggested. Eric nodded. Good. Every minute counts. I'll coordinate with Dr. Myler to see if her new weapon can be deployed sooner than planned. He made his way to the research lab where Dr. Elsa Myler was working tirelessly. The lab was filled with advanced equipment and half-assembled prototypes, a testament to the urgency of their situation. Dr. Myler, how are we progressing on the weapon? Eric asked, his tone urgent yet hopeful. Elsa looked up from her work, her face marked with the signs of sleepless nights. We've made significant progress, Captain. The prototype is almost ready, but we need more time for testing to ensure it's safe and effective. We might not have that luxury, Eric said, his expression grave. The Zenar carrier is still out there, and it's only a matter of time before they launch another attack. We need every advantage we can get, Elsa sighed, understanding the weight of the decision. I can expedite the process, but it will be risky. The weapon could either be our salvation or our doom. We'll take that risk, Eric replied firmly. Prepare the weapon for deployment. I'll make sure we have the support needed to protect you and your team during the process. As the preparations continued, Eric gathered his senior officers for a strategy meeting. The holographic display in the briefing room showed the latest intelligence from Lars's recon mission, highlighting the Zenart carrier and its surrounding defenses. Lars. What can you tell us about their staging area? Eric asked, leaning over the table. The carrier is heavily guarded, with multiple fighter squadrons and automated defense platforms, Lars explained. However, there is a weak point in their formation here. He pointed to a less fortified section of the display. A coordinated strike could create an opening for us to deploy Dr. Maller's weapon. Eric considered the plan, weighing the risks. We'll need to divert their attention long enough to execute the strike. Sophia, how soon can you be back in the cockpit? Sophia, now bandaged but sitting resolutely in the meeting, replied, Give me a few hours, and I'll be ready. We can't afford to wait. All right, Eric said, determination burning in his eyes. Here's the plan. Sophia and Alpha Squad will lead a diversionary assault to draw their fighters away. Lars, you'll coordinate the main strike force to hit their weak point. Meanwhile, Dr. Mahler and her team will prepare the weapon for deployment. We hit them hard and fast, and we don't stop until that carrier is destroyed. Everyone nodded, their resolve solidified by Eric's leadership. They knew the risks but also understood that failure was not an option. As the teams prepared for the upcoming mission, Eric took a moment to himself, standing on the observation deck and looking out into the star-studded void. The weight of responsibility pressed heavily on his shoulders, but he knew they had no choice but to press on. Humanity's survival depended on their success. With a final deep breath, Eric turned and headed back to the command center. The battle was far from over, and they had work to do. Chapter 5 Rising Action The UTF Valhalla and Outpost Epsilon buzzed with activity as preparations for the counterattack reached fever pitch. Engineers, Soldiers and pilots worked tirelessly, their collective determination pushing them beyond the brink of exhaustion. The tension was palpable, but so was the resolve. Eric Johansson stood at the command center, monitoring the progress. His mind was a whirlwind of tactical calculations and contingency plans. Every second counted. Captain, the weapon is ready for deployment, Dr. Elsa Mahler reported over the comm. We've managed to stabilize the prototype. 
It's as ready as it's ever going to be. Unterstot, Dr. Müller, Erich replied. Prepare your team for immediate deployment. We'll provide cover. Lieutenant Sophia Lundgren, looking slightly pale but radiating determination, approached Eric. The pilots are ready, Captain. We're set to lead the diversionary assault. Good, Eric said, nodding. You and Alpha Squad will be the tip of the spear. Draw their fighters away and keep them occupied. Lars and the main strike force will follow through and create the opening we need. Sophia's eyes met Eric's, and for a moment, the gravity of the situation softened. We'll get it done, Eric. We always do. Eric offered a small, reassuring smile. I know you will. Just be careful out there. As Sophia headed to the hangar, Eric turned his attention to Lars Svensson. Lars, your team needs to be ready to exploit any weakness Sophia's team opens up. Timing will be critical. Understood, Captain, Lars replied. We won't let you down. The plan was set. The teams moved with precision, boarding their fighters and preparing for launch. The atmosphere was electric with anticipation and a shared sense of purpose. This was humanity's chance to strike back, to prove their resilience in the face of overwhelming odds. All units, launch, Eric commanded. The fighter bays opened, and the sleek ships of Alpha Squad shot out into the void, followed by the main strike force. The stars stretched into streaks of light as they accelerated towards the Zenark carrier. The initial encounter was swift and brutal. Zenark fighters swarmed to meet the human assault, their sleek, predatory designs cutting through space with deadly intent. Sophia led her squad with unmatched skill, weaving through the enemy formations and drawing their fire. Stay tight and keep moving. Sophia ordered over the calm her fighter danced through the chaos, each maneuver a calculated risk. She could feel the strain in her body, but her mind was razor sharp, focused on the mission. As the battle raged, Lars's strike force approached the designated weak point in the Zenark defenses. We're in position, Lars reported. Initiating attack run. Copy that, Lars, Eric acknowledged. Dr. Myler, prepare to deploy the weapon. On board the strike ship, Dr. Elsa Muller and her team activated the weapon systems. The air hummed with energy as the prototype powered up, its destructive potential barely contained. Weapon systems online. Ready for deployment? Elsa confirmed. Lars's team launched their assault, targeting the vulnerable section of the Zenark formation. Explosions lit up the darkness, and for a moment, it seemed as if they might break through. But the Zenarks were relentless, their reinforcements closing in rapidly. Eric, we're encountering heavy resistance. Lars's voice crackled over the calm. We need more support. Sophia, can you assist? Eric asked, urgency in his tone. On it, Captain, Sophia replied. She signaled her squad to shift their focus. Alpha Squad, divert to Lars's position and provide cover. The maneuver was risky, but Sophia executed it flawlessly. Her squad swooped in, guns blazing, buying precious moments for Lars's team to push forward. The Xenarch forces were momentarily disoriented, their coordination faltering under the combined assault. Deploy the weapon now, Eric ordered, seizing the opportunity. Dr. Mahler activated the prototype, and a beam of intense energy shot out, striking the heart of the Xenarch carrier. The ship shuddered, its shields buckling under the unprecedented force. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as the weapon's impact rippled through the massive vessel. Then, with a blinding flash, the carrier's reactor overloaded and detonated. The explosion was cataclysmic, a massive fireball consuming everything in its path. The shockwave tore through the Xenark fleet, scattering ships and debris in all directions. Direct hit, Lars exclaimed. The carrier is destroyed. Cheers erupted over the comms, the relief and triumph palpable. Eric allowed himself a moment to savor the victory his heart swelling with pride for his team. But the battle wasn't over yet. All units, fall back to the outpost, Eric commanded. Regroup and prepare for any retaliatory strikes. This isn't over until we're sure the Xenarch are completely neutralized. As the fighters began their retreat, Eric felt a surge of hope. They had struck a significant blow against the Xenarch Empire. It was a hard-fought victory, 
but it proved that humanity could stand up to their enemies and prevail. He looked out at the battlefield, where the remnants of the Xenark fleet drifted in defeat, and knew that this was just the beginning. The war was far from over, but they had shown that humanity was not to be underestimated. Eric's gaze turned towards the returning fighters, his thoughts lingering on Sophia and the rest of his team. Together, they would continue to fight, to innovate, and to rise above any challenge the galaxy threw their way. Chapter 6. Consolidation and Strategy The victory over the Xenar carrier was a significant milestone, but the battle had left Outpost Epsilon and the Valhalla battered and in urgent need of repair. Captain Eric Johansson immediately set to work, ensuring that their defenses were strengthened and their resources replenished. In the command center, Eric gathered his senior staff for a strategy meeting. The atmosphere was a mix of exhaustion and cautious optimism. First, excellent work, everyone, Eric began, his voice carrying a tone of sincere gratitude. We took a major step forward today, but we can't afford to let our guard down. The Xenarch will retaliate, and we need to be ready. Lieutenant Sophia Lundgren, looking more herself after some rest and medical attention, nodded. We need to assess our damage and prioritize repairs. Our shields and weapon systems took heavy hits. Agreed, Eric said. Ingrid, coordinate with your engineering teams and get a full damage report. Allocate resources to the most critical areas first. Understood, Captain, Major Ingrid Rasmussen replied, making notes on her data pad. We'll work around the clock if necessary. Commander Lars Svensson spoke up next. We also need to capitalize on our momentum. The destruction of the carrier has thrown their local command structure into disarray. We should consider a follow-up strike to keep them off balance. Eric nodded thoughtfully. I like the idea, but we need more intel before we can plan another offensive. Lars, I want you to send out recon probes and gather data on any nearby Xenarch movements or installations. We need to know what we're dealing with. On it, Captain, Lars replied. Turning to Dr. Elsa Myler, Eric asked, Dr. Myler, what's the status of the prototype weapon? Can we produce more of them? And are there any improvements we can make based on this initial deployment? Elsa looked tired but determined. The weapon performed beyond expectations, but it needs refinement. We can start production on a limited scale, but I'll need time to work out the kinks and improve its reliability. Make it a priority, Eric said. Having more of those weapons could turn the tide in future engagements. The meeting continued, with detailed discussions on logistics, tactics, and personnel management. As they wrapped up, Eric felt a sense of renewed purpose among his team. They were battered but not broken, ready to face whatever came next. After the meeting, Eric took a moment to visit Sophia in the medical bay. He found her sitting up, reviewing tactical data on a portable console. You should be resting, Eric chided gently. Sophia looked up, a faint smile on her lips. You know me, Captain. I rest better when I'm doing something useful. Eric chuckled. I can't argue with that. How are you feeling? I'll be fine she replied. A few more days, and I'll be back in the cockpit. Eric's expression grew serious. You saved us out there, Sophia. We couldn't have done it without you. Sophia's gaze softened. It was a team effort. We all did our part. Eric nodded, appreciating her humility. Even so, your bravery made a difference. Just make sure you take care of yourself. We can't afford to lose you. I will, Sophia promised. You too, Eric. You carry the weight of all of us. Don't forget to take care of yourself as well. Eric nodded, feeling the weight of her words. He left the medbay with a renewed sense of determination. The road ahead was uncertain, but with a team like his, he knew they had a fighting chance. Chapter 7. New Intelligence A few days later, Lars's recon probes returned with crucial data. Eric and his senior staff gathered in the briefing room to analyze the findings. The probes detected multiple Xenarch installations within a 50 light year radius, Lars reported, highlighting the key points on the holographic display. Most of these appear to be supply depots and smaller outposts, but there's one that stands out a command center located here. Eric studied the display. If we can take out their command center, it could cripple their operations in this sector. But we'll need to approach carefully. They'll be expecting retaliation. Sophia, now fully recovered and back in action, leaned forward. We could use the element of surprise again. 
hit their supply lines first, disrupt their logistics. That would weaken their defenses around the command center. Eric nodded. A solid plan. We'll need to coordinate a series of precise strikes. Sophia, you and Alpha Squad will handle the supply depots. Lars, I want you to prepare a strike team for the command center. Dr. Myler, continue refining the weapon and prepare for another deployment. The team got to work, their coordination and expertise melding seamlessly. The upcoming operations would require meticulous planning and flawless execution, but Eric had faith in his team. As they launched their raids on the Xenarch supply lines, the UTF forces struck with precision and ferocity. Each successful mission further destabilized the Xenarch's grip on the sector. Morale among Eric's crew soared with each victory, their confidence growing as they saw the tangible effects of their efforts. Finally, the time came for the main assault on the Xenarch command center. The team gathered for a final briefing. This is it, Eric said, his voice firm and resolute. We've weakened their supply lines and disrupted their operations. Now we take out their command center and deliver a decisive blow. We move fast, hit hard, and show no mercy. Let's finish this. With a chorus of affirmations, the team moved to their stations. The Valhalla led the assault, its powerful weapons blazing as they engaged the Xenarch defenses. Sophia's fighter squadron darted through enemy fire, clearing a path for the strike team. Lars led the ground assault, his team breaching the command center's defenses with surgical precision. As they fought their way through the corridors, the intensity of the battle increased. Eric coordinated from the bridge, his commands ensuring that every move was synchronized. The culmination of their efforts came when Lars and his team reached the command center's core. Planting charges now, Lars reported, his voice steady despite the chaos around him. Get clear, and we'll detonate remotely. Eric instructed. As the team extracted, Eric monitored their progress, his heart pounding. Once they were safely away, he gave the order. Detonate the charges. A series of explosions rocked the Xenarch command center, the shockwaves visible even from the Valhalla's position in space. The structure crumbled, its destruction signaling a critical victory for the UTF forces. Cheers erupted across the comms, but Eric remained focused. All units, return to base. Let's regroup and assess the situation. As they regrouped, the sense of achievement was palpable. They had struck a significant blow against the Xenarch Empire, but Eric knew the fight was far from over. There would be more battles ahead, more challenges to face. But with a team as dedicated and capable as his, Eric felt a renewed sense of hope. As they prepared for the next phase of their campaign, Eric looked around at his team, feeling a deep sense of pride and camaraderie. Together, they would continue to fight, to innovate, and to stand strong against any threat that came their way. The war was not over, but their spirit was unbreakable. Chapter 8. Counteroffensive In the days following the successful destruction of the Xenarch Command Center, Outpost Epsilon and the UTF Valhalla were abuzz with activity. Engineers repaired and upgraded systems, soldiers trained relentlessly, and strategic planning sessions became a daily ritual. The taste of victory had invigorated everyone, but they all knew the Xenarch would not remain passive for long. Eric Johansson stood at the command center's tactical table, reviewing the latest intelligence reports. His team had made significant strides, but the Xenarch fleet was still a formidable threat. The UTF needed to capitalize on their momentum and push the advantage. Captain, we have incoming transmissions from command. Ensign Keller announced. Admiral Reinhardt requests an immediate briefing. Patch him through, Eric ordered, straightening his uniform. The holographic display flickered to life, and the stern face of Admiral Reinhardt appeared. Captain Johansson, congratulations on your recent victories, Admiral Reinhardt began, his voice filled with authority. Your actions have significantly disrupted Xenarch operations in your sector. However, we have received reports of a massive Xenarch fleet amassing near the Argon Nebula. They may be preparing for a counteroffensive. We expect it as much, Admiral, Eric replied. We've been fortifying our defenses and gathering intel on their movements. If they're massing near the Argon Nebula, it could be a staging ground for a major assault. Precisely, Reinhardt said. We need to take preemptive action. You will lead a task force to disrupt their buildup and, if possible, neutralize their fleet before they can launch their attack. 
We'll provide reinforcements and additional resources. This mission is critical, Captain. Eric nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. We'll be ready, Admiral. Thank you for the support. As the transmission ended, Eric turned to his senior officers. You heard the Admiral. We need to prepare for a major offensive. Sophia, I want you to scout the Argon Nebula and gather as much intel as possible. Lars, coordinate with the ground teams and ensure our strike capabilities are at their peak. Ingrid, double-check our defensive systems and make sure we're ready for anything. The team responded with a chorus of affirmations, their resolve unshaken. They had faced impossible odds before and emerged victorious. This would be no different. Sophia led her squadron into the Argon Nebula, their sensors scanning for any sign of the Xenarch fleet. The nebula's dense clouds of gas and dust made navigation tricky, but Sophia's experience and intuition guided them through the treacherous environment. Captain, we're picking up faint energy signatures, one of her pilots reported. Looks like multiple ships on the far side of the nebula. Maintain formation and keep your eyes open, Sophia ordered. We need to get closer and confirm their numbers and positions. As they approached, the scope of the Xenark fleet became apparent. Dozens of ships, ranging from sleek fighters to massive cruisers, drifted within the nebula, their weapons systems glowing ominously. It was a formidable force, one that could easily overwhelm Outpost Epsilon if left unchecked. Scan complete, Sophia said, her voice steady despite the overwhelming sight. Transmitting data back to the Valhalla. Let's get out of here before they spot us. The squadron turned and began their careful retreat, weaving through the nebula's tendrils. Suddenly, warning alarms blared as Xenarch fighters emerged from the clouds, intercepting their path. Ambush! Evasive maneuvers! Sophia shouted, her fighter spiraling to avoid incoming fire. Her squadron scattered, engaging the enemy in a chaotic dogfight. Back on the Valhalla, Eric and his team watched the live feed from Sophia's squadron, tension mounting. Scramble the interceptors and prepare for extraction, Eric ordered. We need to get them out of there. Moments later, the Valhalla's interceptors launched, speeding towards the nebula. The battle within the clouds was fierce, but Sophia's leadership and her pilot's skill kept them in the fight. The interceptors arrived, joining the fray and tipping the balance in their favor. All units, fall back to the Valhalla, Sophia commanded, covering her squadron's retreat. The interceptors provided a protective shield, allowing the damaged fighters to escape. As the last of the ships docked, Eric breathed a sigh of relief. Good work, everyone. Sophia, excellent job getting your team out of there. Sophia nodded, her face a mix of exhaustion and determination. The Xenarch fleet is massive, Eric. We'll need every bit of firepower and strategy we can muster to take them down. Agreed, Eric said. Let's start planning. We have the element of surprise, and we need to use it to our advantage. The strategy session that followed was intense. The holographic display in the briefing room showed the latest intel from Sophia's mission, including the positions and strengths of the Xenarch fleet. We need to hit them hard and fast, Lars said, pointing to key points on the display target their command ships, and disrupt their coordination. If we can sow enough chaos, we might force them into retreat or destroy enough of their fleet to cripple their offensive capabilities. Ingrid added, we should also consider deploying the new weapon prototypes. Their firepower could give us the edge we need, especially against their larger ships. Eric listened, weighing the options. We'll split into three main groups, the assault force, led by Sophia, to engage their fighters and create a diversion the strike team, led by Lars, to target their command ships, and the support team, which will include Dr. Myler's weapon systems, to provide heavy firepower and cover. The team agreed, refining their tactics and ensuring every detail was accounted for. The mission would be risky, but the potential reward was too great to pass up. As the final preparations were made, Eric addressed his crew. This is it, people. We've faced tough battles before, but this one could decide the fate of this sector. Fight smart, fight hard, and we'll come out on top. With determined nods, the crew moved to their stations. The UTF Valhalla and its fleet jumped into hyperspace, heading towards the Argon Nebula and the awaiting Xenarch fleet. The battle commenced with a ferocity unmatched by any previous engagement. 
Sophia's squadron clashed with Xenark fighters, their ships weaving and dodging in a deadly ballet. The assault force's diversionary tactics worked, drawing a significant portion of the enemy fleet away from the main group. Strike team, move in, Eric ordered. Lars's ships surged forward, targeting the Xenark command ships with pinpoint accuracy. Explosions rippled through the void as the command ships took heavy damage, their coordination faltering. Support team, deploy the weapons, Eric commanded. Dr. Mahler activated the new prototypes, beams of destructive energy lancing out and tearing through the Xenark cruisers. The combined firepower of the UTF fleet was overwhelming, pushing the Xenark forces to the brink. Focus all fire on their flagship, Eric directed. The flagship, a massive dreadnought, was the linchpin of the Xenark fleet. Its destruction would signal the end of their offensive capabilities. Under the relentless assault, the flagship's shields collapsed and its hull began to fracture. With a final, cataclysmic explosion, the flagship was destroyed, taking with it the last vestige of the Xenarcha's coordinated threat. All units, fall back to rally point, Eric ordered. The UTF fleet regrouped, their victory hard-earned and decisive. Cheers erupted across the comms as the realization of their success set in. Back at Outpost Epsilon, the mood was jubilant. The defeat of the Xenark fleet had bought them precious time and space to strengthen their defenses and plan for future operations. Eric addressed his crew, pride evident in his voice. Today, we proved once again that humanity will not be conquered. We stand united, resilient, and ready for whatever comes next. This victory is a testament to your courage and skill. Well done, everyone. As the celebrations continued, Eric allowed himself a moment of quiet reflection. The war was far from over, but this victory had given them hope. Together, they would continue to fight, innovate, and stand strong against any threat the galaxy threw their way. The future was uncertain, but their spirit was unbreakable. Chapter 9 Interlude and Intrigue The celebrations on Outpost Epsilon gradually gave way to a renewed focus on fortification and strategy. Despite the recent victory, Captain Eric Johansson knew that the war was far from over. The Xenarch Empire was vast and relentless, and they would surely mount another offensive. Eric walked the corridors of the Valhalla, observing the repairs and upgrades being carried out with meticulous precision. The ship's crew moved with a sense of purpose, their morale high from the recent success. Captain Johansson, a voice called out. Eric turned to see Dr. Elsa Myler approaching, her expression serious. I have some news regarding the prototype weapons. Let's hear it. Eric said, gesturing for her to walk with him. As they made their way to the research lab, Elsa explained, we've made significant improvements based on the data from the last engagement. The prototypes are more stable, and their power output has been increased. However, there's something else. Eric raised an eyebrow. What is it? Elsa stopped and looked at him intently. We intercepted a Xenarch transmission. It seems they were aware of our prototypes even before we deployed them. Someone might be leaking information to the enemy. Eric's expression hardened. Are you certain? Positive, Elsa replied. The transmission contained details about the prototypes that could only have come from someone within our ranks. Thank you, Dr. Muller. I'll handle this personally, Eric said, his mind already racing with possibilities. Continue your work on the prototypes and keep this information confidential. As Elsa returned to her lab, Eric made his way to the security office. He needed to address this potential betrayal swiftly and discreetly. The safety of his crew and the success of their mission depended on it. In the security office, Eric met with Chief Security Officer Anton Kruger, a seasoned veteran with a sharp mind for investigative work. Anton, we have a serious situation, Eric began. It appears we have a leak. Someone has been feeding information to the Xenarch about our prototype weapons. Anton frowned, his expression becoming even more severe. Do we have any leads? Not yet, Eric admitted. But we need to conduct a thorough investigation. Start by reviewing all communications and personnel movements over the past month. Focus on anyone with access to the prototypes. Anton nodded. I'll get on it right away, Captain. We'll find the traitor. Eric left the security office with a heavy heart. The thought of a traitor among his crew was deeply unsettling. He trusted his team implicitly, 
and the idea of betrayal was a bitter pill to swallow. But he knew that rooting out the spy was crucial for their survival. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Sophia Lundgren had taken on a different kind of mission. With a brief respite from battle, she sought to boost morale among the troops. She organized training sessions, team-building exercises, and even a few social gatherings to foster camaraderie. One evening, as Sophia was overseeing a sparring match in the gymnasium, Eric joined her. Lieutenant, mind if I have a word? Of course, Captain, Sophia replied, signaling for a break in the match. She led Eric to a quieter corner of the gym. You're doing a great job keeping morale up, Eric said, genuinely impressed. We need that kind of leadership, especially now. Thank you, Eric, Sophia said, smiling. The crew deserves a chance to unwind and strengthen their bonds. We've been through a lot. Eric nodded, but his expression grew serious. There's something else. We have reason to believe there's a spy among us, feeding information to the Xenarch. Sophia's smile faded, replaced by a look of concern. A spy? Do you have any suspects? Not yet. Anton is handling the investigation, but I wanted you to be aware. Keep an eye out for anything suspicious and be discreet about it. Understood, Sophia said, her jaw set with determination. We'll find whoever is responsible. As the days passed, Anton's investigation began to uncover small but significant clues. Patterns in communication logs, unusual behavior among certain crew members, and discrepancies in access records all pointed towards a possible suspect. Eric and Anton convened in the security office to discuss the findings. We've narrowed it down to a few individuals, Anton reported. One name stands out, Lieutenant Marco Svensson. He's had access to the prototype labs and has been acting strangely lately. Eric frowned. Marco Svensson. He's been with us since the beginning. This doesn't make sense. I know, Anton said, but the evidence points to him. We need to bring him in for questioning. Eric agreed, though his heart was heavy. Confronting a trusted member of his crew was the last thing he wanted to do, but the security of their mission demanded it. Marco Svensson was brought to the interrogation room, his expression a mix of confusion and apprehension. Eric and Anton sat across from him, the tension in the room palpable. Lieutenant Svensson, Eric began, his tone calm but firm. We have reason to believe that sensitive information has been leaked to the Xenarch. The evidence points to you. We need to hear your side of the story. Marco's eyes widened in shock. Captain, I swear, I haven't betrayed the crew. I don't know how this could have happened. Eric studied Marco's face, searching for any sign of deceit. We're not here to make accusations without evidence, Marco, but we need to get to the bottom of this. Is there anything you've noticed, anything unusual that might help us? Marco took a deep breath, visibly shaken. I. I did notice some strange activity in the labs. Equipment being used at odd hours, security protocols being bypassed. I thought it was just some of the scientists working late. Eric exchanged a glance with Anton. We'll need to investigate those anomalies further. For now, you're relieved of duty until we clear this up. As Marco was escorted out, Eric's mind raced with questions. The pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together, but they still needed more answers. The safety of the crew depended on uncovering the truth, and Eric was determined to do whatever it took to protect them. Chapter 10. Unveiling the Truth The investigation into the security breaches intensified. Eric and Anton poured over every detail, analyzing logs, reviewing footage, and interviewing personnel. The anomalies in the lab suggested that the spy had been careful, covering their tracks with meticulous precision. One evening, as Eric sat in his quarters, a message alert flashed on his console. It was from Dr. Elsa Myler, marked urgent. Captain, I've discovered something critical regarding the security breaches. Please meet me in the lab immediately. Eric quickly made his way to the lab, where Elsa greeted him with a mixture of excitement and concern. What did you find, doctor? Elsa led him to a console, displaying a series of complex data streams. I've been running a deeper analysis on the security logs, cross-referencing with our prototype systems. I found a hidden subroutine embedded in the network. It appears to be transmitting data to an unknown source. Eric's eyes narrowed. Can you trace it? I'm working on it, Elsa replied. But whoever did this is highly skilled. 
They've masked their tracks well. However, I did find a potential lead. The subroutine's activation times coincide with specific personnel shifts. It might help narrow down our suspect list. Excellent work, Elsa, Eric said. Keep digging. We need to find out who's behind this. As Elsa continued her analysis, Eric reconvened with Anton. We have a lead, he said, explaining Elsa's discovery. Focus on the shifts that match the activation times of the subroutine. We need to identify who had access during those periods. Anton nodded, immediately setting his team to work. The investigation now had a crucial focal point, and the net was closing in on the traitor. Meanwhile, tensions among the crew were rising. The knowledge that a spy was among them created an atmosphere of suspicion and unease. Sophia did her best to maintain morale, but the strain was evident. During a training session, Sophia noticed one of the junior officers, Ensign Petra Novak, looking particularly anxious. She approached Petra, her tone gentle but concerned. Petra, is everything all right? Petra hesitated, then shook her head. No, Lieutenant. I, I think I saw something suspicious. I didn't know who to tell. You're doing the right thing by coming to me, Sophia assured her. What did you see? It was in the lab, Petra explained. I saw someone accessing the prototype systems late at night. It seemed odd, but I didn't think much of it at the time. Now, with everything going on, I realize it might be important. Sophia's heart raced. Who did you see, Petra? Petra bit her lip, clearly troubled. It was Lieutenant Svensson. I thought he was just working late, but now I'm not so sure. Sophia's mind raced. Could Marco truly be the spy? She needed to report this to Eric immediately. In the command center, Eric listened carefully as Sophia relayed Petra's information. This aligns with the anomalies we found, Eric said. But I want to be sure before we make any moves. I understand, Sophia replied. But if Marco is the traitor, we need to act fast. Eric nodded. Anton, bring Marco in for a more intensive interrogation. We need to press him for answers. Marco Svensson was brought back to the interrogation room his demeanor more anxious than before. Eric and Anton sat across. Chapter 10. Unveiling the Truth The investigation into the security breaches intensified. Eric and Anton pored over every detail, analyzing logs, reviewing footage, and interviewing personnel. The anomalies in the lab suggested that the spy had been careful, covering their tracks with meticulous precision. One evening, as Eric sat in his quarters, a message alert flashed on his console. It was from Dr. Elsa Myler, marked urgent. Captain, I've discovered something critical regarding the security breaches. Please meet me in the lab immediately. Eric quickly made his way to the lab, where Elsa greeted him with a mixture of excitement and concern. What did you find, doctor? Elsa led him to a console, displaying a series of complex data streams. I've been running a deeper analysis on the security logs, cross-referencing with our prototype systems. I found a hidden subroutine embedded in the network. It appears to be transmitting data to an unknown source. Eric's eyes narrowed. Can you trace it? I'm working on it, Elsa replied. But whoever did this is highly skilled. They've masked their tracks well. However, I did find a potential lead. The subroutine's activation times coincide with specific personnel shifts. It might help narrow down our suspect list. Excellent work, Elsa, Eric said. Keep digging. We need to find out who's behind this. As Elsa continued her analysis, Eric reconvened with Anton. We have a lead, he said, explaining Elsa's discovery. Focus on the shifts that match the activation times of the subroutine. We need to identify who had access during those periods. Anton nodded, immediately setting his team to work. The investigation now had a crucial focal point, and the net was closing in on the traitor. Meanwhile, tensions among the crew were rising. The knowledge that a spy was among them created an atmosphere of suspicion and unease. Sophia did her best to maintain morale, but the strain was evident. During a training session, Sophia noticed one of the junior officers, Ensign Petra Novak, looking particularly anxious. She approached Petra, her tone gentle but concerned. Petra, is everything all right? Petra hesitated, then shook her head. No. Lieutenant. I. I think I saw something suspicious. I didn't know who to tell. You're doing the right thing by coming to me, 
Sophia assured her. What did you see? It was in the lab, Petra explained. I saw someone accessing the prototype systems late at night. It seemed odd, but I didn't think much of it at the time. Now, with everything going on, I realize it might be important. Sophia's heart raced. Who did you see, Petra? Petra bit her lip, clearly troubled. It was Lieutenant Svensson. I thought he was just working late, but now I'm not so sure. Sophia's mind raced. Could Marco truly be the spy? She needed to report this to Eric immediately. In the command center, Eric listened carefully as Sophia relayed Petra's information. This aligns with the anomalies we found, Eric said. But I want to be sure before we make any moves. I understand, Sophia replied. But if Marco is the traitor, we need to act fast. Eric nodded. Anton, bring Marco in for a more intensive interrogation. We need to press him for answers. Marco Svensson was brought back to the interrogation room, his demeanor more anxious than before. Eric and Anton sat across from him, their expressions serious and resolute. Lieutenant Svensson, Eric began, his tone calm but firm. We have reason to believe that sensitive information has been leaked to the Xenarch. The evidence points to you. We need to hear your side of the story. Marco's eyes widened in shock. Captain, I swear, I haven't betrayed the crew. I don't know how this could have happened. Eric studied Marco's face, searching for any sign of deceit. We're not here to make accusations without evidence, Marco, but we need to get to the bottom of this. Is there anything you've noticed? Anything unusual that might help us? Marco took a deep breath, visibly shaken. I, I did notice some strange activity in the labs. Equipment being used at odd hours, security protocols being bypassed. I thought it was just some of the scientists working late. Eric exchanged a glance with Anton. We'll need to investigate those anomalies further. For now, you're relieved of duty until we clear this up. As Marco was escorted out, Eric's mind raced with questions. The pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together, but they still needed more answers. The safety of the crew depended on uncovering the truth, and Eric was determined to do whatever it took to protect them. Dr. Elsa Mahler continued her analysis of the subroutine, working tirelessly to trace its origins. Days passed, and the tension on the Valhalla grew. The crew was on edge, knowing that a traitor might still be among them. Finally, Elsa called Eric with a breakthrough. Captain, I've managed to trace the subroutine. It leads to a remote access point in the engineering section. Whoever is behind this has been very careful, but we have a chance to catch them in the act. Eric's eyes narrowed with determination. Good work, Elsa. We'll set a trap and catch this traitor once and for all. Anton assembled a team of security officers, and they moved stealthily to the engineering section. They set up surveillance and waited knowing that the spy would likely attempt to access the subroutine again. Hours passed in tense silence, then movement was detected. A figure approached the terminal, their actions swift and practiced. The security team sprang into action, surrounding the traitor. Freeze. Step away from the console, Anton commanded. The figure turned, revealing a face that Eric and Anton recognized instantly. It was not Marco Svensson, but rather another officer. Lieutenant Karen Myler, Dr. Myler's assistant? Eric stepped forward, his expression a mix of shock and anger. Karen, why? Karen's face was pale, her eyes darting around as if seeking an escape. I, I had no choice. The Xenarch have my family. They forced me to do it. Eric's anger softened, replaced by a deep sadness. Karen, you should have come to us. We could have helped you. Karen shook her head tears streaming down her face. I thought I could handle it on my own. I'm so sorry, Captain. Anton stepped forward, placing handcuffs on Karen. You're under arrest for espionage and endangering the lives of this crew. As Karen was led away, Eric felt a heavy weight lift from his shoulders. The spy had been caught, but the cost was high. Trust had been shattered, and the crew would need time to heal. Dr. Elsa Myler was devastated by her assistant's betrayal but she resolved to continue her work, redoubling her efforts to improve the prototype weapons. Eric assured her that the crew would stand by her, knowing she was not at fault. With the traitor apprehended, Eric and his team could finally refocus on the larger threat of the Xenarch Empire. The battles ahead would be fierce, but they were united and determined to defend their home and their way of life.
As the Valhalla prepared for its next mission, Eric addressed his crew. We've faced betrayal and hardship, but we've come out stronger. Together, we will continue to fight, to protect what we hold dear. Stay vigilant, stay strong, and know that we will prevail. The crew responded with a resounding cheer, their spirits lifted by Eric's words. The war was far from over, but they were ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. United and resilient, they would continue to stand against the darkness, forging their path to victory. Chapter 11. Rising Tensions With Karen Mahler apprehended, the crew of the Valhalla grappled with the aftermath of her betrayal. The revelation had shaken their trust and left them questioning their own camaraderie. Eric Johansson, burdened by the weight of leadership, knew that restoring morale and unity among his crew was paramount. In the days following Karen's arrest, tension simmered just beneath the surface of daily operations. Sophia Lundgren, ever vigilant, observed the crew's interactions with a watchful eye. She noticed the subtle shifts in dynamics, the whispered conversations, and the lingering glances laden with suspicion. One evening, as Eric and Sophia convened in his quarters to discuss the ongoing situation, a knock sounded at the door. Anton Kruger entered, his expression grave. Captain, Lieutenant Mahler requests permission to speak with you, Anton announced. Eric nodded, gesturing for Karen to enter. She stepped into the room, her demeanor contrite and resigned. Captain, I know I've caused irreparable harm to the crew and compromised our mission. Karen began, her voice trembling with emotion. I want to make amends, to do whatever it takes to regain your trust. Eric regarded her with a mixture of sympathy and resolve. Karen, your actions have consequences, both for yourself and for the crew. But if you're willing to cooperate and assist us in any way possible, we may be able to mitigate the damage. Karen nodded, gratitude evident in her eyes. Thank you, Captain. I'll do whatever it takes to make things right. As Karen left, Eric turned to Sophia and Anton. Keep a close eye on her, but also give her a chance to prove herself. We'll need all the help we can get in the days to come. Meanwhile, preparations for the defense of Outpost Epsilon were in full swing. Lars Svensson, the ship's tactical officer, led a series of drills and simulations to test the crew's readiness for another Zenarch assault. The crew responded with determination, honing their skills and tightening their defenses. Elsa Myler, undeterred by her assistant's betrayal, continued her work on the prototype weapons. With Karen's assistance, she made significant progress in refining the technology, ensuring that the Valhalla would be well-equipped for whatever challenges lay ahead. As the ship hurtled through the void of space, Eric found solace in Sophia's company. They stole moments together whenever their duties allowed, finding comfort and strength in each other's presence. Despite the looming threat of the Xenarch, their budding romance provided a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty. One evening, as Eric and Sophia stood on the observation deck, gazing out at the stars, they shared a rare moment of tranquility. We've been through so much together, Sophia said, her voice soft with emotion. But no matter what happens, I know we'll face it together. Eric nodded, his heart swelling with affection for the woman beside him. You've been a constant source of strength and support, Sophia. I don't know where I'd be without you. As they stood together, enveloped by the vastness of space, they found comfort in each other's embrace. In that fleeting moment, amidst the chaos of war, they found peace. But their respite was short-lived. A sudden alert blared through the ship, jolting them from their reverie. The Xenarch were approaching, their fleet massing for another assault. With grim determination, Eric and his crew prepared for battle once more, their resolve unshaken. For they knew that as long as they stood united, they would emerge victorious against any foe that dared to threaten humanity's survival. Chapter 12 The Xenarch Offensive The alarm echoed through the halls of the Valhalla a stark reminder of the imminent threat. Eric Johansson's voice rang out over the intercom, his tone resolute and commanding. All hands to battle stations. Prepare for incoming Xenarch forces. This is not a drill. The crew moved with practiced precision, their earlier tensions momentarily forgotten in the face of the approaching danger. Anton Kruger coordinated the security teams, ensuring all defensive positions were manned and ready. Lars Svensson updated the tactical displays, 
tracking the incoming fleet with grim focus. Eric made his way to the bridge, Sophia by his side. As they entered, the atmosphere was charged with a mix of fear and determination. Elsa Mahler and Karen Mahler were already at their stations, working on the final adjustments to the prototype weapons. Status report, Eric demanded as he took his place at the center of the command console. Lars turned to him, his face set in a determined expression. The Xenarch fleet is approaching at high speed, Captain. They outnumber us, but we've fortified our defenses. We'll give them a fight they won't soon forget. Eric nodded, his gaze sweeping over his crew. Stay sharp, everyone. We've faced them before, and we'll do it again. Trust in your training and in each other. We're not just fighting for our lives, we're fighting for humanity's future. The Xenarch ships appeared on the main view screen, a formidable array of vessels glinting menacingly against the backdrop of space. The bridge fell silent as the crew braced themselves for the inevitable clash. Open fire, Eric commanded, and the Valhalla's cannons roared to life, unleashing a barrage of energy blasts at the enemy fleet. The battle erupted in a blaze of light and sound. The Valhalla's shields flared as they absorbed the incoming fire, and the ship shook with the force of the impacts. Eric's voice cut through the chaos, directing maneuvers and issuing orders with unwavering clarity. Sophia coordinated with the other officers, her calm efficiency a steadying presence amidst the turmoil. She monitored the damage reports and relayed critical information to Eric, her mind focused on keeping the ship and its crew alive. Elsa and Karen worked frantically in the lab, overseeing the deployment of the prototype weapons. Their innovations gave the Valhalla a crucial edge, allowing them to punch through the Xenarch defenses with devastating precision. As the battle raged on, Eric's eyes were drawn to a particularly large Xenarch vessel, its design more advanced and formidable than the others. Target that ship, he ordered. It's the command vessel. Take it out, and we disrupt their coordination. The Valhalla's main cannon swiveled to face the enemy command ship. Lars input the targeting data, and a powerful beam of energy lanced out, striking the vessel with pinpoint accuracy. The Xenarch ship shuddered, explosions rippling along its hull. Direct hit, Captain, Lars reported, a hint of triumph in his voice. But the victory was short-lived. The Xenarch, driven by their relentless aggression, redoubled their assault. The Valhalla was hit hard, the shields flickering and failing under the sustained barrage. Shields are down, Sophia shouted, gripping her console as the ship rocked violently. Eric's mind raced, searching for a solution. Divert power from auxiliary systems to the forward batteries. We need to punch a hole through their lines and regroup. The Valhalla's engines roared as the ship surged forward, its weapons blazing. The crew fought with every ounce of their strength, their unity and resolve the only thing standing between them and annihilation. As the battle reached its peak, a sudden flash of light filled the view screen. The Xenarch command ship, critically damaged by the earlier strike, finally succumbed to the relentless assault. It exploded in a brilliant conflagration, sending shockwaves through the enemy fleet. The Xenarch forces faltered, their coordination disrupted. Sensing their moment of opportunity, Eric gave the order to press the attack. All units focus fire on the remaining ships. Drive them back? With a renewed surge of energy, the Valhalla and its crew unleashed a final, decisive assault. The remaining Xenarch ships, now leaderless and disoriented, began to retreat, their formation breaking apart. A cheer went up among the crew as the last of the Xenarch vessels fled into the void. The Valhalla had once again emerged victorious, but the cost had been high. In the aftermath of the battle, Eric stood on the bridge, surveying the damage. The ship was battered and bruised, but it had held strong. He turned to his crew, pride and gratitude evident in his eyes. We did it he said, his voice carrying the weight of their shared struggle. We held the line and defended our home. You all fought with incredible bravery and determination. Today, we showed the Xenarch that humanity will not be defeated. The crew responded with a round of applause, their spirits buoyed by the hard-won victory. Eric knew that the road ahead would still be fraught with challenges, but for now, they had earned a moment of respite and reflection. As the ship systems were repaired and the wounded tended to, Eric and Sophia found a quiet corner to themselves. They sat together, 
the adrenaline of battle giving way to a profound sense of relief. I'm proud of you, Eric, Sophia said softly, her hand resting on his. You led us through one of the toughest battles we've ever faced. Eric squeezed her hand gently, a smile touching his lips. I couldn't have done it without you, Sophia. You've been my rock through all of this. They shared a quiet moment, drawing strength from each other's presence. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, they knew they would face them together, united by their bond and their unwavering resolve. The Valhalla continued its journey through the stars, a beacon of hope and resilience in the face of adversity. Eric Johansson and his crew, forged in the crucible of battle, stood ready to defend humanity against any threat that dared to challenge their existence. Chapter 13 Aftermath and Healing The immediate threat had passed, but the echoes of battle still lingered on the Valhalla. Damage control teams worked tirelessly to repair the ship systems, patching hull breaches and restoring essential functions. Medical personnel tended to the wounded, their efforts a testament to the resilience and dedication of the crew. In the ship's infirmary, Eric visited those who had sustained injuries during the conflict. His presence was a source of comfort and encouragement, a reminder that their sacrifices had not gone unnoticed. As he moved from bed to bed, offering words of gratitude and reassurance, he felt a deep sense of responsibility for each member of his crew. Sophia joined him, her medical training invaluable in aiding the wounded. Together, they provided both physical and emotional support, their partnership a beacon of strength in these trying times. Meanwhile, Dr. Elsa Muller and her assistant Karen continued their work in the lab, focusing on further improving the prototype weapons that had played a crucial role in their recent victory. Despite the strain of betrayal and the ongoing repairs, their determination to bolster the ship's defenses remained unshaken. Karen, eager to atone for her past actions, worked with relentless focus. She had been granted a second chance, and she was determined to make the most of it. Under Elsa's guidance, she poured her energy into the task at hand, her expertise proving invaluable in the face of the ongoing threat. One evening, as they were engrossed in their work, Elsa looked up from her console, a thoughtful expression on her face. Karen, I know this hasn't been easy for you, but your efforts have not gone unnoticed. You're proving yourself to be an asset once more. Karen met Elsa's gaze, gratitude shining in her eyes. Thank you, Dr. Muller. I won't let you or the crew down again. I owe it to everyone to make things right. Elsa nodded, a small smile breaking through her usual seriousness. Keep it up. We have a lot more work to do. In the mess hall, the crew gathered for a much-needed break, the atmosphere lighter than it had been in weeks. Laughter and conversation filled the room as they shared stories of the battle, their camaraderie strengthened by the trials they had faced together. Eric stood at the entrance, watching his crew with a sense of pride and relief. He spotted Anton Kruger at a table, deep in conversation with a group of security officers. Catching Eric's eye, Anton waved him over. Captain, join us, Anton called out, a grin on his face. We were just recounting how you led that charge straight through the Zenark lines. Quite the sight to behold. Eric chuckled, taking a seat beside his security officer. It was a team effort, Anton. Everyone played their part. The conversation flowed easily, and for a moment, they could forget the weight of their responsibilities and enjoy the simple pleasure of each other's company. Sophia joined them, her presence adding to the sense of unity and comfort. As the evening wore on, Eric and Sophia found a quiet corner to themselves. They sat side by side, the hum of the ship's engines a soothing backdrop to their conversation. We've been through so much, Eric, Sophia said, her voice filled with emotion. But moments like this remind me why we fight. For each other, and for the hope of a better future. Eric took her hand, his gaze steady and warm. You're right, Sophia. No matter what comes our way, we'll face it together. We've proven that we're stronger than any challenge. They shared a tender kiss, their bond reaffirmed by the trials they had endured. In each other's arms, they found solace and strength, a promise of love and partnership that would carry them through whatever lay ahead. In the days that followed, the Valhalla's repairs were completed, and the ship was once again ready to face the vast unknown of space. Eric called a meeting of his senior officers, including Sophia, Anton, Elsa, and Lars, to discuss their next steps. 
Despite our victory, the Xenarch threat remains, Eric began, his tone serious but resolute. We've proven that we can stand against them, but we need to stay vigilant and proactive. Our mission is far from over. Elsa nodded, her determination evident. We've made significant advancements with the prototype weapons, but there's always room for improvement. We'll continue to refine our technology to give us the best possible advantage. Anton added, our security protocols will be tightened. We can't afford any more breaches. We'll also work on strengthening our alliances and gathering intelligence on the Xenarch movements. Lars chimed in. We'll keep training and preparing for whatever they throw at us. Our crew has shown incredible resilience, and we'll build on that. Eric looked around the table, pride and confidence in his gaze. We're stronger together, and we'll face the future with that strength. Keep up the good work, everyone. We have a lot more to do, but I have no doubt that we'll succeed. The officers dispersed, each returning to their duties with renewed purpose. As Eric watched them go, he felt a profound sense of hope. They had faced darkness and emerged stronger, united by their shared mission and their unbreakable bond. The Valhalla continued its journey, a symbol of humanity's resilience and determination. Eric Johansson and his crew stood ready to defend their home and their future, their spirits unyielding in the face of any challenge. Together, they would forge their path through the stars, guided by hope and the unshakable belief in a better tomorrow. Chapter 14 Unforeseen Alliances With the Valhalla restored and the crew's morale high, Eric Johansson knew it was time to take the fight to the Xenarch. They could no longer remain on the defensive. He called a meeting of his senior officers to discuss their next steps. We need to find their stronghold, Eric said, looking around the table. If we can strike at the heart of their operations, we can disrupt their plans and buy ourselves some much needed time. Elsa Müller nodded tuchtfully. Our intelligence is limited, but we have intercepted some Zenarch communications. They mentioned a location that could be their central base. Sophia leaned forward, her eyes sharp. We need more information. We can't afford to walk into a trap. Perhaps we should consider reaching out to our allies for assistance. Anton Kruger added. The Coalition of Free Systems has been monitoring Xenarch activities closely. They might have the intel we need. Eric agreed. Let's establish contact with the Coalition. We'll request a meeting and see if we can collaborate on this mission. In the meantime, prepare the ship and the crew for a long-range operation. A few days later, the Valhalla arrived at the Coalition's main hub, a bustling space station orbiting a distant star. The station was a hub of activity, with ships coming and going, representing various allied species united against common threats. Eric, Sophia, Anton, and Elsa disembarked from the Valhalla and made their way to the Coalition's command center. They were greeted by Commander Ingrid Thorson, a formidable leader with a reputation for strategic brilliance. Captain Johansson, it's an honor to meet you, Commander Thorson said, extending her hand. We've heard of your recent victories against the Xenarch. Impressive work. Eric shook her hand firmly. Thank you, Commander. We're here because we believe we can help each other. We've intercepted communications that suggest the Xenarch have a central base. We need more intel to plan an effective strike. Commander Thorson led them to a large conference room where a holographic map of the sector was displayed. We've been tracking Xenarch movements for months. We believe their main base is located here, she said, pointing to a remote, heavily guarded system. Elsa examined the map closely. If we can confirm this location, we'll need to devise a strategy to penetrate their defenses. It won't be easy, but it's our best shot. Commander Thorson nodded. We're prepared to assist you. Our reconnaissance teams have gathered detailed data on the system. We can provide support ships and additional firepower for the mission. Eric looked around at his team, their faces resolute. We'll work together then. Let's plan this operation down to the last detail. We can't afford any mistakes. Over the next few days, the Valhalla and coalition forces coordinated their efforts, refining their plans and preparing for the mission. The tension and anticipation were palpable as they made final preparations. Eric and Sophia found a moment alone on the observation deck, looking out at the coalition's bustling space station and the stars beyond. We're taking a big risk, Sophia said softly but it's the right move. We can't keep reacting to their attacks. 
We need to take the initiative. Eric nodded, his gaze steady. We've come this far, and we've faced worse odds. I believe in our team, and I believe in our mission. We'll succeed. Sophia smiled, her hand finding his. Together, we're unstoppable. The day of the mission arrived. The Valhalla and the Coalition fleet moved into position, ready to jump to the Xenarc system. Eric stood on the bridge, his crew focused and determined. Prepare for jump, Eric ordered. Remember, we're fighting for our future. Let's make this count. The ships jumped to hyperspace, emerging moments later in the heart of the Xenarc controlled system. Immediately, they were met with a fierce onslaught of enemy fire. Engage all weapons, Eric commanded. Stick to the plan and follow my lead. The battle erupted, a chaotic clash of ships and energy blasts. The Valhalla maneuvered with precision, its advanced weaponry cutting through the Xenarch defenses. Coalition ships flanked them, adding their firepower to the assault. Elsa and Karen worked tirelessly in the lab, ensuring the prototype weapons operated at peak efficiency. Anton coordinated the security teams, ready to repel any boarding attempts. As the Valhalla pushed deeper into the enemy stronghold, Eric could see their target. A massive Xenarch command ship, bristling with weapons and shields. Focus all fire on the command ship, Eric ordered. We take that down, and we cripple their operations. The Valhalla's cannons fired in unison, striking the command ship's shields. The coalition ships joined the assault, their combined firepower overwhelming the enemy defenses. Finally, a critical hit penetrated the command ship shields, causing it to shudder and explode in a blinding flash of light. The remaining Xenarc forces, disoriented and leaderless, began to retreat. A cheer went up among the crew as the last of the Xenarc ships fled the battlefield. The Valhalla and coalition forces had won a decisive victory. In the aftermath of the battle, Eric stood on the bridge, surveying the debris of the defeated Xenarc fleet. He felt a profound sense of accomplishment and relief. Commander Thorson appeared on the view screen, her expression one of satisfaction. Captain Johansson, you and your crew have done an incredible job. This victory will be a turning point in our fight against the Xenarc. Eric nodded. Thank you, Commander. This wouldn't have been possible without your support. We've proven that together, we're stronger than any threat we face. As the Coalition and Valhalla crews celebrated their victory, Eric found Sophia amidst the crowd. They shared a quiet moment, the weight of their achievements settling in. We did it, Eric, Sophia said, her eyes shining with pride. We made a difference. Eric smiled, his heart full. And we'll keep making a difference. Together, we can face anything. The Valhalla and its crew, now bolstered by their new alliances and strengthened resolve, continued their journey through the stars. With their unwavering determination and unity, they stood ready to defend humanity and ensure a future free from the Xenarch threat. Chapter 15. The Final Push. The victory over the Xenarch command ship had given humanity a much-needed reprieve, but Eric knew the war was not over. The Xenarch, though leaderless and disorganized, were still a formidable foe. The Valhalla's recent success had emboldened the coalition and now it was time to press their advantage. Captain, we've received new intelligence, Lars announced, his eyes glued to the tactical display. There's a concentration of Xenarch forces regrouping at a secondary base. If we strike now, we can prevent them from mounting another coordinated attack. Eric nodded, his jaw set with determination. Prepare the ship for immediate departure. We'll hit them hard and fast. The crew moved with practiced efficiency, their earlier victory fueling their resolve. As they readied for the next battle, Eric and Sophia stood together on the bridge, sharing a moment of silent understanding. The Valhalla and the Coalition fleet emerged from hyperspace into a chaotic battlefield. The Xenarch forces, caught off guard, scrambled to mount a defense. Eric issued rapid commands, coordinating the assault with precision. Target their weapon platforms first, he ordered. Disable their defenses and clear a path for our bombers. The Valhalla's cannons unleashed a relentless barrage, tearing through the Xenarch defenses. Coalition bombers swooped in, delivering payloads of devastating ordnance. The enemy base shook under the onslaught, its defenses crumbling. As the battle raged, 
Karen Mahler took her place at the helm of one of the assault shuttles, her face set with determination. She had volunteered for a critical mission, a boarding operation to sabotage the base's central reactor. This was her chance to prove her loyalty and atone for her past actions. Keep them busy, Captain, Karen said over the comms. We'll handle the reactor. Understood, Lieutenant, Eric replied. Good luck. Karen and her team breached the Zenark base, fighting their way through the narrow corridors. Explosions and gunfire echoed around them as they pushed towards the reactor core. Karen's heart pounded, but she remained focused, her mind clear. Back on the Valhalla, Eric monitored the boarding team's progress, his heart heavy with concern. Sophia stood by his side, her hand resting on his arm. She'll make it, Eric, Sophia said softly. She's determined to set things right. Eric nodded, his eyes never leaving the tactical display. I know she will. She has to. The battle outside intensified as the Xenarch forces launched a desperate counterattack. The Valhalla shook under the barrage, but the crew held their ground, their resolve unbroken. Shields are holding, Captain, Lars reported. We can take it. Good. Keep up the pressure, Eric commanded. We're almost there. Inside the Xenarch base, Karen and her team reached the reactor core. Sweat dripped down her face as she worked to plant the charges, her hands moving with practiced precision. Hurry up, Karen, one of her team members urged, glancing nervously at the reactor's readouts. We don't have much time. Almost done, Karen replied, her voice steady. Just a few more seconds. As she set the final charge, an explosion rocked the corridor, sending debris flying. Xenark soldiers poured into the room, their weapons blazing. Defend the charges, Karen shouted, drawing her sidearm. We can't let them disarm them. The team fought valiantly, holding the line as the countdown ticked closer to zero. Karen's heart pounded, her focus unwavering. This was her moment of redemption. On the bridge of the Valhalla, Eric watched the timer countdown. Every second felt like an eternity. He gripped the edge of the console, his knuckles white. Get ready to pull them out, Eric ordered his voice tight with tension. The charges detonated, and a blinding flash of light filled the view screen. The Xenarch base shuddered, then erupted in a massive explosion. The shockwave rippled through space, sending debris and enemy ships scattering. Karen, report. Eric called out, his heart in his throat. We're clear, Captain. Karen's voice crackled over the comms. Mission accomplished. Heading back to the ship, a cheer erupted on the bridge as the crew celebrated their victory. Eric allowed himself a moment of relief, his eyes closing briefly in gratitude. Good work, everyone, he said, his voice filled with pride. We've struck a major blow against the Xenarch today. In the aftermath of the battle, the Valhalla and coalition forces regrouped, their spirits buoyed by the decisive victory. Repairs were underway, and the crew took a much-needed respite. Eric found Karen in the med bay, her injuries being tended to by Sophia. He approached, his expression a mix of sternness and gratitude. You did well, Lieutenant, Eric said, his voice steady. You've earned back our trust. Karen met his gaze, relief and gratitude shining in her eyes. Thank you, Captain. I won't let you down again. Sophia smiled, her touch gentle as she bandaged Karen's wounds. You've proven yourself, Karen. We're proud of you. As the ship settled into a semblance of normalcy, Eric and Sophia took a moment to reflect on their journey. They stood together on the observation deck, the stars stretching out before them. We've come a long way, Sophia said, her voice filled with wonder. And we have a long way to go. Eric nodded, his hand finding hers. But we'll face it together, no matter what comes our way. The Valhalla continued its journey a symbol of hope and resilience in the vast expanse of space. With their unwavering determination and unity, Eric Johansson and his crew stood ready to defend humanity and ensure a future free from the Xenarch threat. Chapter 16 The Last Stand The destruction of the Xenarch base had been a critical victory, but it was clear to Eric and his team that the war was far from over. Scattered and disorganized, the remaining Xenarch forces were regrouping for a desperate last stand. Intelligence reports indicated that their remaining fleet was converging on a remote, fortified planet in a bid to consolidate their power. 
We need to hit them before they can rebuild, Eric said, addressing his senior officers in the briefing room. This is our chance to end this war once and for all. Commander Thorson joined them via hologram, her expression determined. Our scouts confirm that the Zenark are massing their remaining forces. This will be a tough battle, but if we succeed, it will cripple their ability to wage war. Elsa Mahler brought up a detailed map of the target planet. The planet is heavily fortified with both ground and orbital defenses. We'll need a two-pronged attack, one to take out their space defenses and another to disable their ground installations. Anton Kruger nodded. Our ground teams are ready, Captain. We'll hit their key installations and take out their command structure. Eric looked around the table, his resolve mirrored in the faces of his officers. Let's prepare for the final assault. This is it, everyone. Let's finish this. As the Valhalla and Coalition fleet approached the Xenarch stronghold, tension filled the air. The bridge was a hive of activity, with every crew member focused on their tasks. Eric stood at the center, his eyes fixed on the view screen. Entering enemy space, Lars reported, picking up multiple enemy signatures. They're ready for us. Launch all fighters and prepare for engagement, Eric ordered. We need to clear a path for the ground teams. The fleet surged forward, weapons blazing. The Valhalla led the charge, its advanced cannons tearing through the Xenarch ships. Explosions lit up the void as ships from both sides exchanged fire. Sophia worked alongside the tactical officers, coordinating the ship's defenses. Shields holding at 80%, Captain. We're taking heavy fire, but we can hold. Keep up the pressure, Eric replied. We need to break through their lines. On the surface of the planet, Anton Kruger and his ground team prepared for their assault. They descended in drop ships, landing amidst a hail of enemy fire. The Xenarch had entrenched themselves deeply, and every step forward was met with fierce resistance. Move, move, Anton shouted, leading his team through the chaos. Take out those turrets. Karen, now fully integrated back into the team, fought alongside him, her determination unyielding. She had something to prove and this battle was her chance to show her loyalty and bravery. Explosions rocked the battlefield as coalition forces advanced, systematically dismantling the Xenarch defenses. The ground assault was brutal, but the team's training and camaraderie shone through. Above, the space battle raged on. The Valhalla pushed forward, its weapons cutting a path through the enemy fleet. Eric coordinated with Commander Thorson, their combined forces overwhelming the Xenarch. We're through their main defenses, Lars reported, a hint of triumph in his voice. Ground teams are making progress. Eric nodded, his focus unbroken. Keep the pressure on. We need to ensure the ground teams can reach their targets. Sophia glanced at Eric, her eyes filled with determination. We're almost there, Eric. We just need to hold a little longer. On the surface, Anton and his team reached the central command complex. The fighting was intense but they pressed forward, driven by the knowledge that this battle could end the war. Karen and a small squad breached the command center, encountering fierce resistance. She fought with relentless energy, her actions fueled by a deep sense of duty. Cover me, Karen shouted, as she planted charges on the central control hub. This will take out their entire command structure. Anton provided cover fire, taking out enemies as they closed in. We've got you, Karen. Do it. With a final burst of effort, Karen set the charges and activated the timer. Charges set. Let's move. They retreated under heavy fire, making their way out of the command center just as the charges detonated. The explosion rocked the entire complex, sending shockwaves through the battlefield. On the Valhalla, Eric watched as the command center erupted in a massive explosion. Cheers erupted on the bridge as the enemy forces began to falter their command structure crippled. Ground teams have succeeded, Lars reported, a smile spreading across his face. We've done it, Captain. Eric allowed himself a moment of relief, his shoulders relaxing. Well done, everyone. This victory belongs to all of us. Sophia stepped closer, her eyes shining with pride. We've faced every challenge and come out stronger. Together. Eric took her hand, his heart full and will continue to do so, for our future. In the days that followed, 
the Valhalla and coalition forces mopped up the remaining Xenarch resistance. The war was effectively over, and the galaxy began to rebuild from the ashes of conflict. The crew of the Valhalla celebrated their hard-won victory, their bonds stronger than ever. Eric and Sophia, having faced countless trials together, looked to the future with hope and determination. As the ship continued its journey through the stars, Eric knew that they would face new challenges and adventures. But with his crew by his side, he was ready for anything. The Valhalla had become more than just a ship. It was a symbol of resilience, unity, and the enduring spirit of humanity. And as long as they continued to stand together, there was nothing they couldn't achieve. Epilogue. A new dawn. Months had passed since the final battle with the Xenarch. The galaxy was slowly healing, and new alliances were being forged in the wake of the war. The Valhalla continued its mission, exploring the unknown and protecting the fragile peace they had fought so hard to achieve. Eric and Sophia stood together on the observation deck, looking out at the stars. The future was uncertain, but they faced it with hope and confidence. We've been through so much, Sophia said softly, her hand resting on Eric's, but we've come out stronger. Eric nodded, his gaze steady, and we'll continue to face whatever comes our way. Together, as they stood side by side, the Valhalla sailed on through the cosmos, a beacon of hope and a testament to the unbreakable spirit of those who dared to dream of a better future. We would appreciate it if you would be so kind to like and subscribe. Comment below. We'd love to hear your fan theories in the comments.